if you've ever wondered how I do my lighting and highlights for basically all of my designs, then you're in luck today. Uh, the tutorial is going to break it all down and it's pretty much a version 2.0 of a previous method that I covered in a video back in 2022 and I just thought it might be time to kind of go back and revisit it and kind of update it slightly as my workflow has changed a lot since then so I thought it'd make a good video. I'll be showing you how to take your cutouts from looking like this to this and it's only going to require three simple adjustment layers uh, which are brightness and contrast curves and hue and saturation. I hope you find the tutorial useful and if you do a like and a comment would be greatly appreciated and if you want to see more of my videos in the future then make sure to subscribe and help my channel to grow. Now let's get into it. So for this example we're going to be using a picture of Shirky uh, that's been taken recently and I picked it because there's not really many harsh shadows and very harsh lighting on him despite it obviously being taken out of stadium with floodlights and I thought it would just make a nice easy example kind of just to showcase and we can use the pre-existing light uh, and shadows already on the picture uh, to kind of work in our advantage a little bit and kind of um, emphasize those shadows and highlights that are already there and just kind of make it a little bit more 3D like as the image at the moment is looking quite flat uh, and you really kind of want to play into those dark tones and obviously the highlights just to really make those pop essentially um, and bring the cutout to life. So the first thing that I always do if the eyes aren't really um, kind of vibrant enough and they're not really popping is the little details that kind of bring these cutouts to life so my first step basically in all my cutouts recently uh, what we do is to bring a brightness and contrast adjustment layer hold alt or command to kind of clip mask it onto the actual cutout and then I just kind of bring it to about I don't know let's bring it to about 50 Control or command I to invert the layer mask and then we can go in and just get a very small soft brush probably about a 13 pixel and using white just to kind of paint in the brightness back into his eyes just to kind of get those details to pop a little bit and to make the eyes stand out a little bit more. So kind of zooming out, it always helps. Don't kind of stay zoomed in just to kind of make sure that the cutout is still looking realistic and it's not just looking like uh, something straight out of a cartoon. And I think that's a little bit too bright for me. So let's reduce it down to maybe I don't know, 75% and there you go. It just brings a nice little bit of detail out in the eyes. Um, and yeah, it just makes it a little bit more visually appealing in my opinion anyway. But brightness and contrast, that's one out of the way, but we are gonna be using brightness and contrast again after we've done the curves adjustment layers. So next step again, we're gonna create a curves adjustment layer. We're gonna do the same thing, clip it down into this uh, and we're gonna start off with the shadows. I'm not 100% sure if this is the best way of doing it, but I found that it works for me. So we're just kind of gonna roll with that. Uh, so once you've got your curves adjustment layer here and you can see the curve, for shadows, what I usually do is I just bring this top kind of vexes or point down a little bit maybe just to this first line so about 75 percent of the way down as you can see that already kind of reduces the brightness of the the cutout and then i create a point basically in the middle usually kind of where it yeah i mean where the the grid kind of peaks as you can see i just create a point here and then drag it further down just to kind of emphasize those shadows even more and i think that looks all right we can obviously tweak this kind of moving forward as that's why these are so good in comparison to the exposure layers that i used to use back in the day there's just so much more room to kind of play around with things even after you've done it we can go back into these graphs and kind of play around with it a little bit more um, and kind of improve the results that you get at the end but this is quite nice obviously the shadows aren't too harsh if you compare the two obviously you can push this a lot further if you want to go for something a little bit more cinematic but i really like to work within the realistic look essentially um, so yeah i think this should be okay and now again we're going to do the same thing Control i invert the mask and this is what we should have now going back into the brush we're probably going to increase the size to about i mean in this case it's quite a big cutout so probably about 100 yeah 115 pixel ish and i want to bring the opacity down to about 20 percent just so we're not painting a very harsh shadow so what i'm going to do in this so i'm going to start off maybe reduce the brush down a little bit just to kind of start painting in the shadows kind of where they're already existing just to make them stand out a little bit more and where i think it, if the light let's say using the background as a reference obviously the light source is kind of in the top right here hitting him so it'll be hitting kind of his face his shoulder a little bit of his chest his hand here maybe a little bit of his arm which is obviously behind him but this area is going to be quite dark along with his chest here and we're going to just kind of paint in 
the shadow is just like this. The bottom of his hand will not be getting hit by the light, so we can kind of add a little bit of shadow here. Again, we can emphasize the shadow, which is already done by his hand with the light coming from here. And then we can kind of paint in the shadows on the bottom of his arm, just like this. Make Just obviously tweaking the brush um, as you go along. I use the square brackets um, keys on my keyboard just to play around with this as you're going. And yeah, it's just a case of yeah picking your spots and really kind of playing around with this. Obviously, this is using pre-existing shadows. So if you were creating something from scratch, I'd probably go with something a little bit harsher than this. Um, so I'd definitely kind of up the opacity or play around with this curve a little bit more. As you can see, you literally just drag it down and it makes the shadows a lot harsher. But we'll probably stick with something like this. What you can go in and do as well, just to kind of bring in a lot more of the detail, you can go in with a smaller brush and kind of paint in his... Um, his fingers here, which obviously would be getting covered by the shadow as the light would not be hitting these parts of his fingers slash arm. And then um, that really kind of just helps the details again, just to pop a little bit more and make them not as flat, which is the main thing with pictures. Obviously you can have great lighting on pictures and um, they might not need a lot of work, but a lot of match imagery like this, you have to kind of go in and really focus on the details to kind of get them to come to life as they do look flat a lot of the time. So painting those in already makes quite a bit of a difference. So if you just toggle this on and off, as you can kind of see already, it really kind of emphasizes those. And then going into his face here as well, this part of his face is not gonna be getting hit by the light. So we can just kind of go in, increasing the brush and start painting in the, sh the harshest shadows, which are at the back here. And then we can go in with a bit of a larger brush and paint in the areas, which again, will have a little bit of a shadow, maybe not as much, a little bit of his ear, underneath his ear, and kind of the back here, which should be quite dark. And maybe just a little bit here, plus underneath his eyebrows, his nose, maybe a little bit on his chin as well, and in his mouth as well. And let's just zoom out and kind of have a look at this. Straight away, as you can see, very, very big difference already. And it, it obviously it's not something out of the ordinary, but it's just realistic and it looks much better than what it was. So now we're going to create another curves adjustment layer, clip it down, and this time we're going to move this point at the top here to the left. Again, 25%, and again, you can see straight away how much of a difference it makes. And then instead of bringing the point down, we're going to put a point here and bring it up, which kind of brings out the shadows all the way up and just kind of improves the brightness of the entire piece. Control I again, just to mask it. I'll probably stick with the 20% opacity brush uh, just like what we did on the shadows and now we begin to paint the highlights on the piece so obviously on his forehead his hair kind of here a little bit of his cheek uh, on his nose his other cheek and yeah you just kind of play around with um, how you think the light would actually be hitting him i'm going to link a resource down in the description which basically is like a 3d model generator of like a head essentially uh, with no features it's just like a block but you can move the light source around the head and it kind of helps you to understand the way light works where it hits the face where it would fall kind of it was obviously hitting from the top right here where it wouldn't fall and it just helps you visualize it a little bit more and i think it, it has really helped me in the past and uh, yeah it just helps you moving forward and you'll never kind of forget it if you do it a few times you won't forget it you'll pick it up and you'll be flying so i'm doing basically the reverse of what I did with the shadow part of this. I'm just painting in all the areas that will be getting hit by the light and improving the lightness and the brightness, should I say, on those. A little bit on his chest, maybe a little bit down here on his arm, a little bit on top of his thumb and the top of his arm here, and maybe just a little bit more on his face in general, just to kind of see what that's looking like. So again, if we zoom out and see the entire piece, let's have a look. And you can see straight away, massive, massive difference. Maybe if we do a little bit more blending on the shoulder here, just so it's not as harsh of an edge. But yeah, straight away, massive difference. Maybe a little bit more on his face there. But yeah, this is, I'm quite, quite happy with that now. So we go back to brightness and contrast again, going back to kind of method one after you've done these two. But essentially what we're going to do when you've got the shadows, we're going to go into this layer and then create a brightness and contrast layer just above it. And then we're going to bring the brightness down along with the contrast, maybe just a little bit like minus 10. And what I'm going to do is holding alt or command. I'm just going to drag the same layer mask as we did with the shadows 
onto this one and it'll basically just create more of an emphasis of what you've already done but again it just kind of gives you a little bit more control and uh, a few different sliders essentially to get a different result um, and you can play with this until you're happy with it i think it's a little bit too harsh so if we go to zero and just keep increasing it i think like 60 percent will probably be okay uh, and it just yeah it just makes those shadows a little bit harsher a little bit nicer and it works really well one more thing before we move on to the highlights this works for both highlights and shadows if you're doing something a little bit more stylized what you can do is you can go back into the curves adjustment and you want to click this little drop down here with rgb and let's say obviously i want a bit more of a blue shadow maybe you can go into the blue graph and as you can see when you play with these it changes the color of the shadow so if you want something a little bit bluer this probably works a little bit better in um highlights when you've got a colored light you can go in and do this and i'll show you just how we do it but i'll probably leave it for the shadows as i like those i don't think they need any color adjustments just yet so we'll leave that and now we're going to go to the top of our kind of stack here and we're going to create another brightness and contrast layer um mask it to the stack that we've got going and again holding all we're just going to drag and copy the layer masks that we've got going on here um, you can either do this before or you can do it after you've copied the mask. I've done both the methods here so you can kind of see. But now you can just really play with the sliders and you get to see it basically straight onto the areas that you kind of masked out. So in here, contrast isn't really doing much. So we're probably not going to tweak that at all. But brightness wise, I'll probably bring it to about, I don't know, maybe 14. Let's see if that does anything. It does a little bit. And as you can see, especially in his hair, that really kind of brings that out. But I'm not going to push it any further as I don't think it will just look a little bit silly. I'm going to keep it realistic like I keep saying. Uh, so we stick with this. But yeah, that's basically the first two steps done. So brightness and contrast, you kind of go back and forth between that and the curves adjustment layer. And now we move on to the final step, essentially. Uh, hue and saturation is, again, a tool that a lot of artists use just this. Uh, you can get really, really good results with just this method. You don't need to kind of play around with the curves or the brightness, but I quite like building up my shadows and highlights first, and then you can kind of go into the hue and saturation and play around with this. But when you've got a colored light, like let's say in this example, we have a light blue light coming from the top right. What you want to do, create the hue and saturation layer, clip it down to the stack, colorize it. And I've tested this beforehand, but around 214 is good in terms of color for this. And um, then we're going to go to about 70 saturation just to kind of get quite an intense color. And then again, brightness or lightness, should I say, go around to about 55. I think that looks pretty good. And then what you want to do is you want to double click on this layer which brings in the blend if options if gray so you want to go into this little section here underlying layer and whilst holding alt you can kind of open up these arrows and i'll probably do something like this and as you can see the shadows basically aren't affected by the light source which is great we want to keep that as obviously the light is only hitting the light parts so we're just going to press okay and i'll probably bring this down to about uh, let's say 50% is probably good. So let's do 50% ish. And then we're going to just invert the mask and we'll just go in and start painting in the final kind of colored highlight. So again, I'll probably use the same brush, maybe a little bit more opacity, about 25. Make it a little bit smaller and you can kind of just go in and start painting in the very harshest kind of areas where the light's hitting. As obviously that's going to be a little bit more um, transferring the color basically of the light a bit. And uh, yeah, so I'm just going to basically paint his face a little bit on his chin, a bit on his shoulder, which is obviously where the main part of the light is going to be hitting him. Maybe a little bit more of his arm, face, and yeah, something like that. So as you can see, it just brings in a slight color to his face and helps to blend essentially uh, with the, the, the background that you've got going. And obviously, if you're not 100% happy with this, like I was mentioning, if you want to go into your curves adjustment layer again for the highlights, use this little drop down, go into blue, and then you can kind of, as you can see, bring in this um, point basically in the middle if you want. I find it works quite well in the middle. And just bring it up a slight touch. You can see the difference it makes already, especially on the hair. So I'm going to probably just move it up a little bit. 
and we've got something like this which i am quite happy with but i'm going to go into the hue and saturation layer as this now has made his chin look a little bit silly and off and i'm just going to go in revert to black and obviously kind of paint out the areas that were highlighted before but as you can see it just does a nice little hint of color and it brightens up those final areas and then i think what we could also do we can bring in another hue and saturation layer just to kind of play in this effect a little bit more and um, we're going to replicate basically the same thing so we're going to colorize the color is like 216 saturation wise we'll probably bring this to about let's do 60 this time but lightness we're going to keep it on zero we're going to go into linear dodge add and we're going to double click on the layer again holding alt we want to open up this bracket and we're going to copy the same thing that we did last time but this time we're going to bring the opacity down to about literally about 20 percent just to get a final hint of light and color Control i to invert the mask again and then go into back to painting the final kind of highlights on his face just to kind of finish off the piece and yeah this just brings it together nicely just again adds a little bit of color if you're doing a non-colored light just basically sunshine you could play around with this and add a bit more of like a yellowish tone uh, obviously depending on what kind of style you're going for but you could just drop this completely and leave it as is but yeah this is kind of what we're going to finish up with with um one final step that is optional and um, whenever light hits a light object or a reflective kind of surface is obviously a bit of bloom which is a bit of light bouncing back so what i usually do is i finish off obviously all of your adjustment layers first and then you want to go back in create a layer that isn't clip masked into this entire stack going with quite a big brush and i'm just going to color pick probably this area which is quite light maybe make it a little bit more saturated and go with opacity 100 on this brush and i'm just going to paint in this little bloom over his face maybe a little bit over his shoulder you want to go and change the blending mode to screen and opacity wise we're probably going to go about like 20 percent we don't want this massive and now what you can do is you want to create a layer mask go to black and you can kind of remove a little bit of the bloom to make it again a bit more realistic so it's not too harsh but as you can see it creates a nice kind of reflective bounce bloom from the light that is hitting from the top right but this is it this is done using the three different um adjustments layers brightness and contrast curves and then finishing up with hue and saturation and obviously this just simple painting in with a brush bloom i'm not sure how much different this is um but yeah i mean the shadow's a little bit harsher on the example that i did but as you can see you can kind of just go in here go into your curves and just really bring those down just to kind of get that to pop even more and yeah this is what you end up with obviously this is slightly different to what i did at the start but this is what you end up with it's very easy and simple the more you do it the better you're going to get the quicker you're going to get a kind of recognizing where the light's hitting where the light shouldn't be hitting where the harshest shadows should be etc um, and you can really play around with these to kind of get an effect that you're happy with there's a lot of different sliders obviously on the graphs you can change a lot of things on here it's not like a method that works for everything and um, this is kind of just like a general technique you can push this a lot further you can make the shadows a lot harsher make the highlights a lot harsher get a very cinematic look but this is the method i use in a lot of my work at the moment working for city anything that i do outside of work i, I, I do kind of stick to this technique i don't really kind of venture too far out um and yeah it's very simple only three steps like i mentioned and yeah hopefully it's a bit of an upgrade on the technique that i released in 2022 hopefully you guys still find this useful uh, and yeah i really hope you enjoyed the video i'm gonna get back into the videos properly hopefully i've not been too rusty in this tutorial as it's a lot of speaking uh, but yeah if you enjoyed the video like i mentioned previously please do leave a like and a comment as it does help my channel to grow and obviously subscribe if you want to see more of my videos in the near future and i hope to see you all guys in the next one